What's up, guys? I'm Daniel from Birds of Prey Armory. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Osprey here, Birds of Prey Armory. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Brian, B.O.P. Brian has a call sign as well. Levant, <laughs> Birds of Prey Armory, baby. We're just doing a quick, uh, a quick little rundown, debrief video of um, our last event that we held, Blackout up at Sherwood Forest. We definitely appreciate all you guys coming. Um, sh big shout out from my side to all the Indians and the Cowboys. <coughs> And all the guys that ran with me under the commander went out there and uh, took the castle from uh, the civilians out there. <laughs> yeah, so. I have a message for you, Slang Steel. You will not take my water and get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we, uh, we as we say, we really appreciate you guys coming. Um, this is the first time us doing a uh, kind of debrief video like this, so bear with us. We got uh, maybe a couple speed bumps, but we'll get through. Um yeah, so first off, let's talk about um, what you got, what you guys thought from from. I know that you were doing more of like a player perspective. Uh, me and me and Daniel, being the owners of the business, we were the ones running the game. We did have in-game characters, but uh, we were definitely more planted within our firm spots. Brian got to go out a little bit more on the field. So, what what do you think from that? I think I got to go out more than Brian did. Oh, you got to go out more than Brian. He, did. he definitely did. played more than I did. Yeah. Brian, yeah. Did, Brian, I had Brian playing more of like the the in game arms dealer. We're trying, you know, we really tried yeah. to implement that into the game, and it just wouldn't work with me. You I would, know, being that, so <clears throat> I had, you know, Brian had a little bit of a hard time the last, you know, up there in Indy Battlegrounds doing the role playing. So we trying to give him, you know, a more dedicated part in the game. Yeah. It seemed to work out. He spent a lot of time out there doing doing the arms dealer. And you know. and that's the thing I will say about uh, the game is um, even though I was technically a staff member, right? I feel like uh, maybe some of the players, if not the majority of them, didn't know that. And based on the way I was dressed and what my role was, I think maybe a lot of the players thought I was just a playable character as opposed to a staff member. So, so let's fill. Let's and fill that's why I think Slang still say, you know, he, yeah, he yeah, killed so, me off top, took yeah. the water. So let's fill which, him in which real quick. Which is fair, you know. So, let's fill him in real quick yeah. on what we're talking about for those who don't know or weren't aware. Uh, we tried to do an in-game dealer on the field. We do Noli Gay sales ourselves. We tried to do an in-game dealer on the field with smokes and, you know, a couple other things from Anoli Gay. Um, we know that there was a little bit of confusion as far as, as when you were a playable character and when you were just a strictly a dealer. Uh, some of the things that we thought, you know, um, uh, the dealer obviously, we're, we're dealing with real money at that point. The dealer obviously has to be a uh, non-killable NPC character at that point. Um so, I mean, next time we'll probably do, um, you know, add a, add a Shema or something like that onto you. Something that makes it a little bit more visible <clears> so right. you have a difference between just your, your like playable a character. Red, a big red and black Shema around your neck or something like that. Just something that just blatantly, you know, and, and it's red so they're not going to be, you know, players won't be looking at you like, oh, I'm going to shoot that red rag, you know. Right. right. That's also not Slang Steel's fault. Um, also because I am I'm myself am new to role-playing games. Talk up a little bit. So... I understand, you know, completely. I just gotta, you know, myself. I'm like I said, I'm new to role playing games, so I gotta play the rules better. Um, yeah, but next time when you go out, you know, you just, you know, you'll you'll have a little bit better idea of how you're gonna be playing right, that right. part. And you know, if and if people shoot you now, you know that being a staff member and being in the game the way you know the way you're set in it, you're just you're not really able to die. So even if they do shoot you, it's kind of like, eh, you shot me. Well, and do also you feel any better. Also, too, I mean, with all that said, too, you know, obviously that's something that not all players are, are used to right. anyways. You know, a, this is a brand new so. concept. I mean, it's not anything that I've really ever seen. I mean, I've seen, you know, I've been in games where, uh, you know, people will set up booths and sell things during the game, but not. But it's always it's always players, and it's always a different, you know, style of RPG game. This is more of a of an actual product that can be used and sold in the game for actual money, not not right. in game money. Yeah, yeah we're, we're using real currency. Yeah. yeah, we've seen the in game currency used before for things like that. But with right. this being the actual smoke that you can buy, you can always do the pre orders beforehand. But we are trying to have some dudes who run out yeah. just and they need that one to get by real quick while they're still out on the field. Right, which which leads me to another thing is it, it, you can always pre order order your smoke and like have your own little box that the arms dealer is holding on to that out, out on the field and use it for your character in there you know to go visit the arms dealer pick up your smoke 
you know, to have, you know, give yourself something to do during the game, you know, and play that out and have Incorporate that interaction that into with the, him. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, so it's okay. not, it's not something that's just totally exclusive, you know, but we're going to keep trying it. It's, you know, there's not a, there's no reason not to, it's not hurt anything. So. Yeah. Yeah, so so anyways, from the perspective let's see your perspective real quick. I thought I, I thought the game did really well. Uh-huh. I thought every I mean I, for the most part I players were talking about how happy they were. Yeah. Even in the raffle. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. they were talking about happy. Yeah, they were. I was real happy so, to hear that. Yeah. It was it was great. And and definitely like when I got there when I was getting my wristband, um what what's her name? Is yeah. Kathy, okay, yeah, Kathy was saying there was, I think, 12 players that 12 other people have yet to sign in, and I'm like, okay, let me, you know, I, I didn't know anything about it, so I was going to check with you guys, but shortly after, then more people started coming, I'm saying, okay, this may be, you know. We were also there an yeah. hour before we opened the doors. So. Right, yeah, so. so I thought it was really well, and people had fun, you know, I mean, right. that right. was a really good turnout. And I heard, I heard we did have a couple people utilize the vendor aspect. Yeah. While you were on the field playing as the vendor, right? Yeah, um, I know there wasn't too many sales, but you had a few, didn't you? The I don't know the the guy's name. Forgive me for this, but uh, I just know he was dressed as a chicken. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Colby. <laughs> Colby. Yeah, yeah. Shout out, shout Colby. out, to yeah, Colby, sh- boy. Sh- shout out to the chicken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he he bought some smokes. He bought some of the uh, the micro smokes. I think he bought them in green, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I yeah, think I you like, might have got him like green, buddy. Th- wait, you know, yeah, Colby, get back to us on that. Let us know, you know, what you, what you think about that. Because, uh, I mean, if you're really the only one that's tried it, you know. Yeah, oh, those are know. awesome, dude. Yeah. Those are awesome in role playing games. Like uh, when we fir- when we had the first blackout, remember that? And uh, I was sent to you on a mission. I had the smoke around my thumb. I had yeah. the, uh, the the they were ready to pull right. in case something popped off right. and whatnot, you know. And then you saw it though, you know, because I didn't hide it too well. <laughs> but I think those are good, you know. Like if if you're in a role playing game or you know some something similar like that, you know, right. when you got to pop it off an emergency, it's pretty good to hide, you know. Yeah. You can keep it on your belt, keep the, you know the, the the pin around your thumb or something, pop it. I mean, it's decent. Well, I used it in the first one too as a couple of like beacons. You know, I got captured yeah. a couple of times, and I was trying to get you know help my team out a little bit with. Uh, you know, where, where my actual location was in the town and I would pop it off and, you know, kind of spray it up in the air. They'd be like, what, you know, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you know, giving away my location. You know? Well, and I'll tell you, uh, yeah. me as the, uh, you know, playing the governor character, I gave out a couple to some of my guys that I gave missions to, you know, and I said, Hey, look, I said, if it goes sideways, pop one of these smokes. If I see the blue smoke, I'll know the, you know, danger, right. danger of the foot. I'll send exactly. another crew out, you know, right behind to get your back. We, I gave a couple out to my guys. We intended on doing it like a like a chemical attack to, uh, you know, to you guys, but we never got around to it. We uh, never had to use it. The, uh, I, you know, just the way the thing, the way everything played out. I think, uh, I think there was a you know a little bit too much space being utilized for the amount of players that we had. Yeah, and you know that was we did have what about 300 400 people who were interested on the facebook link right yeah you know so we did kind of we, um, we tried ex- to accommodate for you know what you know about 100 150 that we thought would show up you know but and and you know spread this space out to that size but what we'll do next time is is you know shrink the fields down and kind of you know uh coerce the game in a way in such a way where we're doing certain scenes in uh on certain on different parts of the field as a, as a, as opposed to using the whole field at one time, it'll keep uh, people together and it'll keep, you know, the action, the interactions, you know, more tightly woven together. Well, and it so. also too, with it being, um, I know not everybody does role playing games, host role playing games. Uh, we had, we had a couple people there who didn't realize that it was a role playing game. Uh, thankfully enough, they, they, you know, got into the spirit of the role playing and went with it for what it was. And they mm-hmm. told me later that they did have a real good time with it. Um, but um, I definitely think that that's something that's, I know there are people out there who do it. There has to be people out there who do it uh, here in Indiana, if not one of our neighboring States. Um, but as far as, as far as that goes, the only ones I can remember are ones that have totally failed immediately after the game. The role playing. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you know, and I mean, no need to mention names at all, but I mean, it just, you know, the couple that I've been to, you know, I was really excited to go to, and, you know, I wanted to have a good time, you know, 
and you know I wasn't into it, but you know I have a few team members that are that are totally into the role playing and you know that style of RPG game, and uh, you know so I wanted to try it out and you know the way we speculated it and and got ready for the games and got hyped for the games and you know they get you know the way they would talk about it and get me into the game made me finally want to actually try it out and then, you know the couple the couple times that we did go out they were rather disappointing so you know after Taylor and I started talking about doing one of our own you know that I mean, I mean, that was one of the driving factors. Right, was yeah. that, that it was like, man, we got to get this right. You know, we want to do something actually yeah. fun. We want to. Yeah, we see but it's interesting. It's, but it's going to require, you know, a high a high amount of players if we're going to have we're going to be renting out that you know that much space at the field. You know? Oh, for sure, for sure. And I mean, there's been talk ever since the first one. You know, I mean, people have been more interested in all that. Yeah. Um, as far I mean, as far as for what we had, I think everybody had an awesome time. We saw plenty of people who were. Uh, uh, we, we we saw a couple people come back. Um, the negotiator came back for for sure as character. Definitely played uh, a good negotiator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, Shout definitely, out Sam yeah. real quick. <laughs> yeah, Sam Roy. He uh, yeah. he dragged that body back. Who the dude I executed? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. He tangled up the body and was like, "All right, let's go back." And I mean that that's a good that's a good example of of somebody who's taking the immersion role because I know that he had some trigger time for yeah. sure. Hey bro, you want to hear something clowning that happened right around that time? Yeah. It was, uh, you know, after I did the little execution over the live and, you know, Zach was filming it. Right. You know, you know, the dude that, uh, um, uh, Nate from deranged airsoft, mm -hmm. he, uh, that was been out there for us. He, uh, took a sniper shot from the castle and whacked Zach while he was walking off the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I heard about that. <laughs> it was funny. Now, I, I got a question. I wanted to, when you said that, um, when we were talking about the role playing mm -hmm. and how some people didn't know it was role playing. Right. Is this why you were mentioning how it could be a good idea to have just a right off the top battle at the beginning of the game to kind of get people into, you know? Well, well I mean, also to just uh, like, like a nice, nice um, just warm nice. up. Just a nice muscle warm up, yeah, okay. yeah. and uh, you know, kind of, you know, get. Honestly, uh, I don't know if you ever noticed, but like, you know, at least for me, but like, if I'll go to like a CQB field or a, uh, or just a smaller field where we start where we start playing out, it'll it'll take me two or three, you know, good runs or good, uh, you know, good rounds before I'm like feeling, you know. Before you into the spirit. Before I'm into the thing. spirit. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah that's okay, a good okay, way to put it. Basically, where I don't give a fuck if I get hit by those BBs or not. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I mean, <laughs> also, too, I mean, if you think about it, like, uh, Team Deathmatch is my favorite mode, regardless. But a lot of times people just flat start out with Team Deathmatch for everybody to get warmed up. Yeah. And I like it like that personally mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and honestly, this next time, we don't really have a choice, anyways, because I fucked you guys up and we're, you guys got to fight to get that castle back. Yeah. So. I mean, I figure there's probably going to be a storm coming after me on that one. So. Oh, I know some of my guys are not pleased with what what <laughs> happened at the end. I know that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I thought that was cool. If you said you were out on the field a little bit, I was mainly um, holding down the castle with all of my guys. Uh, I tried to. Uh, I knew. I knew that your guys were after me. And uh, I knew it was a big, a big open field and a lot of space for me to kind of run and hide. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't want to do too much hiding. I wanted to, I wanted to make it more. Uh, I wanted to make it more fun. So I tried to dress a little light. And I want basically what I wanted to do was get like a mob chase going on, like we did the last time. I had a blast yeah. when we. Uh, when your guys pinned me up against that bank and everybody was chasing me, you know. Oh, basically. and I sent them all after you? Yeah, and you yeah, sent the whole yeah. crew after I had a blast yeah. doing that shit. So, I, I mean, I wasn't trying to, like, necessarily facilitate, you know, the same thing. But I was trying to get, you know, the hostility brewing. So, right. there was, so there was, you know, not necessarily less talking interactions, but just more interactions in general. Like, hey, you know, just more, you well, know, also, what's going on? Why, you know, man... I, you know, the commander is supposed to be cocky. He's a dictator. So, you know, I wanted to be up in the shit where people oh. are, you know, you know, like kind of getting mad at him, you know, like saying, you know, why is he, you know, why is he just, you know, acting like everything is hit? Well, because it is. Right. You know, so, and right now we got that going on. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do want to say something too. Um, I want to shout out to, uh, the guys that I 
don't remember their names. I know their faces. Uh, they were in the tan camos, and they had the. Are you uh, talking about the like like desert like Marpat? Kind of, yeah. And they had the 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 berets on. You're talking about the third the third faction in yeah, the section eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. That's so, the dudes from that's the dudes from section eight. Yeah. Okay. Matt, Matt yeah. yeah shout out girl. to them. They're they're awesome dudes. I just want to say something really quick. Uh, during the game, uh, when I as I was an arms dealer, um. I overheard, you know, I have the radio, so I overheard the conversation. I can hear what's being said. And uh, at some point during the game, I guess, uh, they were supposed to be a rival military faction. They were their own faction throughout the entirety of the game. Right, okay, so, yeah, yeah and they were supposed to come get water. They're supposed to, you know, just, just ri you know, they were, they were, again, they were military, but they were, ro like, they were rogue, I guess. They were coming to attack us. So as an arms dealer... I was suspicious. I already got killed by slang steel, right? Mm -hmm. So they came along, and there was a younger guy there. Um, he had longer hair, and uh, I don't remember what his name was, but uh, he had the pistol out, right? He had his pistol out. So I was suspicious. I already got, again, I already got killed. So I had my gun out on him, and uh, I pointed it at him, and I said, hey, you know, what are you doing? You know, basically, whatever. And he goes, oh, you know, my gun's broken, you know, such and such. And uh, I was really suspicious of him. So I told him, I said, think about it. You know, I'm thinking he's going to draw on me. Like, I just got killed. So I feel bad because I don't know if he was with me or against me or with us or against us or whatnot. But I feel bad because I don't know if his gun was broken or not legit in the game. And uh, I, I, I just want to apologize to him if it was because I did treat him like he was an enemy. Like if he was, you know. If right. he didn't have a problem, I, and and I want to apologize to him, you know, oh, no because way. I didn't I didn't mean to treat him like that. I'm just again I'm new to this role playing thing, and uh, well, I, I'm a, suspicious of everyone, you know. Well, so. that's the that's the thing, man. You know, um, like we said, we saw a lot of guys out there who were new yeah. to role playing, uh -huh. and they kind of um took directive just from the other guys who had already made a character, right, and presented that character within the world of Blackout. You know, and I saw some other guys kind of, you know, looking at some of the costumes that were made. Uh, Chief Sling Steel had the had the feathers in the hat oh, yeah, dude, with he, the poncho and all that. He had the axe, the tomahawk, uh, and everything. He, yeah. yeah, yeah, which yeah. which embodied his character. Yep, with right. Colby and the uh, fucking chicken. What, what was the chicken yeah, thing? Yeah. Though? What was the chicken for? <laughs> why why was he? Why the chicken? I don't, know. I don't know what the chicken was. Good. I, I mean, hey man, I thought it was hilarious. It was cool. I'm just saying, but why um, the chicken? I was, I'm like, what? The <laughs> Colby, get back with us on that too, I guess. What was <laughs> Dude, the chicken? It was funny <laughs> as hell, man. It was funny as hell because in the middle of a firefight, all right, I got the radio on as an arms dealer and I'm just listening to everything. And I hear the shots going off. I hear everything going on. And all I hear is Daniel. All I hear is Raptor over here just saying, yo, I want that fucking chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Dude, the chicken uh, costume comes over and then he buys the smokes from me, whatever. So as he's buying the smokes, I'm like, "Yo, I got the chicken. The chicken <laughs> is here." But no, that was awesome. That was that was really awesome. I I, I like that idea. I don't know what the uh, chicken was incorporated in, as far as in, you know in the game was, but uh, shout out to you, man. That was pretty cool. Was so pretty talking awesome. about talking about like um, yeah, guys created his own character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, all the cowboys too. They always dress up and uh, and come out there, oh, which, yeah. which which leads us to our next little thing. For the April eleventh game, Cowboys and Indians. Yeah, for the April eleventh yeah. game, we're gonna we're gonna drop that blackout game and uh, and just kind of do like a little open play spin off of the of the blackout game and just do like Sweet. a Cowboys and Indians battle. Yeah, so April eleventh, we're changing that date from the cow or the blackout games to Cowboys and Indians, just with the response we had from this last game. Yeah, um, it's going to be in in entangled into the blackout series, but it's definitely going to be its own separate novel. Um, but it's basically going to be ran like an open play style game. So you know, you know, dress up in your, you know, you dress up in costumes, come out as cowboys and Indians. It really doesn't matter for for what you're shooting now. And so look out for that. We will change uh, and get some more info on our Facebook page for that. Uh, but yeah, talking about people immersing themselves into the game. Um, that Tom, and speaking of the cowboys as well, uh, one of the things that they did that that we all thought was awesome in itself, they won the twenty five dollar raffle from the previous game, and they had a a wanted poster of of uh, the commander's Rick. right hand man, <laughs> right? Rick. And yeah, Rick. Yeah, yeah. And I had it posted out. I had it posted out at the uh, castle and all that. Um, and they were the cowboys themselves were going to give that twenty five dollar. Uh, yeah, gift card they won last as time a reward. as a reward to whoever captured Rick. And brought them back. That's um, cool. You know they made they made their own one in sign. 
they were willing to give the $25 gift card to somebody else, you know? Right. Um, I mean, last time with uh, BG Airsoft, the guy who won the $300 gun uh, didn't even have an airsoft gun, you know, wanted an airsoft gun because he was just getting into airsoft. You know, yeah, yeah. so I mean, you know, that's cool. That they were giving back in that way. And, say, still, hey. and still plays. I see him on there often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. see him on there too. Does he, yeah. does he play yeah. with that gun? Well, I'm sure he does. Sweet. Oh yeah, I mean, I see him active in the you know online forums. I know he's that. playing. I mean, so, if he got yeah. he got a custom gun. I mean, I'd be. Oh yeah, I'd be playing with it. <laughs> Three hundred dollars for BG on a custom gun yeah. is is like your BG gun. So yeah, yeah. In that case, uh, since we're on that topic, let's break down some of the uh, sponsors and vendors that we had yeah. there for our event. So BG Airsoft, Bowling Green Airsoft uh, sponsors us sponsors us with the raffles. Um, with Thomas the, Grace, with the uh, and and Chris Carver. Um, Chris Carver is now the um, is now the owner is, is now the owner is of now BG. The, yeah, the new so. owner of, B, of BG Airsoft. So. Uh, Shout out to them. We really, really appreciate it. You guys um, sponsored our very first event we ever hosted as a business. Thank you very much. That I think, is awesome. I think it never won since. I think I think so too. I think yeah. so too. Yeah. yeah. At least at least all of our main events, not necessarily our open plays and stuff, but right. you know all of our main events. I think they've sponsored us all of all of them with a uh, raffle. Um, so d big shout out to those guys. Um, and. Uh, Tax tactical airsoft combat sim simulations. Sweet, uh, they were Torian our and, and very first team. Yeah. You know, you know, player team sponsor. Yeah, exactly. So um, they do all the Kydex work. Everybody, you know, heard it all again. But I mean, those things are awesome. We were talking about you were talking about coming up with the grenade. You know, held with a pin in oh, your yeah. hand for yeah. a quick move. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got the ones that have the little clips on it, so you don't even quick have to work. Yeah, just, you can just pull, pull it, it right off and throw yeah. it, and you know, yeah. good to go because it's already burning. Yeah, and they uh, making these dope little uh, card holders. We got our symbol put in that boy. Too. Oh yeah, I got yeah. the. Uh, I have the MP5 holders. I want to say I got these right here are the wallet holders. The wall, yeah, the card yeah. holders. But that is, the, yeah, yeah, look. That big is shout the, out to Torian and Sam though for oh, sure. That is nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now we can hold that a little bit closer for people. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's got our ours. Right. We got the VOP logo on ours. Um, if you can see, you got the tax logo on the back. Uh, you just get it apart. Put whatever you need in there, all your ID cards, your money, all that. You got the nice little clip on the back right here, tying it down where you need, and you're good to go. Yeah, dope. And they can do some uh, custom work on it too. So um, you know, like ours obviously said BOP. They can do you know a majority of things that you would want or need on the backside too. So uh, yeah, keeps it locked in. And if you think about it, think about how much of convenience this is when you're airsofting, man. If you don't want to carry your wallet or your, you know, any kind of other personal information on you and you got to put up in your bag you can just keep your debit card whatever payment method you have cash in here so well, when you also, go to vendors you can just you know have it on you also too they're uh they're the only ones i've seen with one of those who make those odin speed loader carriers right on the hip i mean i haven't seen any other companies make that no, no, those are their lifesaver too yeah i mean <laughs> people who play hard deep milsim you know with yeah. No breaks coming in between. Like us at Centurion. Yeah, you like know, going up to Centurion yeah. games and yeah. all that. Those things, I mean, you know, I carried four mags on me when I went out to Centurion the last time. I'd be out there for four or five hours and just, you know, have that BB bag in the back pocket. And I was good to yeah. go for the day. Yeah. It was dope. Had yeah. the water on the back. But, you know, this, this Centurion run is going to be a little bit different. Right. You know, we're not going to have that luxury. Right. So. But yeah, we also had out uh, Deranged Airsoft. Uh, Nate yeah. Hugh from Derange Airsoft. He makes a lot of uh, 3D printed stuff. Right. Uh, got to see some of his stuff on the table while we were out there. Uh, I know we, me and you both picked up yeah. a patch. Yeah. And then BFA came out, uh, supported us and set up their tent. And uh, and then our brand new sponsor, our uh, our big our big now our big main team sponsor now PewTubers Anonymous which you guys probably saw the uh, the yeah. podcast we did with him if you guys haven't definitely look at that check out that page it was a lot about blackout but it's also relevant you know we got a lot more relevant information for the future on that as well we, and yeah and we're you know we got big things coming with uh, with Zach so got a lot of plans. awesome guys yeah. awesome guys Oh yeah, and I'm telling awesome you, I thought the vendor row was pretty cool. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, I thought it was set up good. Too. Yeah, yeah. I wish we had a little more freedom with uh, with the way with with the way we were allowed to use the pavilions um, and uh, and where we were able to set up. Just uh, you know, 
um, just the positioning. Yeah. You know, the, being on the hill was a little difficult right yeah. there. Um, I think it would have been cool to kind of use that backside a little bit. But uh, we definitely need to definitely need to work on parking because getting the cars out of there is the main thing and making making room for everyone. Well, like we so. realized there were some people who left uh, to go and get some. We were doing the role-playing story so we didn't in, incorporate a set lunch break. Right, yeah. But a lot of people left. And some of them went that, and got yeah. some food anyways, and they had a little yeah. bit of a hard time getting out because other people were just parked yeah. kind of crooked and all that. Right, which is another thing, too, is we'll definitely be putting in a lunch break from now on. Yeah. So just put that right in there and uh, get that done, like, midday or something. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's um with 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 it being... I just hate going out at noon once we, you know, uh, and doing a lunch break at noon or one when we've only been out there for two or three hours. Well, and my thoughts on it was always to... Um, if it's a role-playing game, it kind of breaks immersion to set a lunch break. Right. But unfortunately, they that's don't. something that we learned yeah. that that you know the players the players wanted a lunch break. Want a lunch break. So, yeah. well, wasn't it you that said maybe incorporate it? Well, we tried. Well, we were, that's what we were kind of hoping that people would kind of go out in Paris and uh, and kind of knock some food out and get back right. in there and leave people in the game. But it just it just didn't work out that way. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's one thing where we just we learn as we go for certain things as well ourselves as far as hosting the games. I guess what we could do is just is write it out, you know, with uh, with you know, and, until people were able to kind of learn and and whether or not they actually like that kind of game style, you know, and then and if the numbers right. were to build from there, it'd be one thing. But we're trying to make it fun for everybody. Well, and so. also too, I guess it is a. Uh, one thing when you have th there is a difference between those those hard push mill sims that are obviously multiple days as opposed to just one day but at the same time too those fields allow you to bring snacks and food on the field right yeah if you have a sure field doesn't yeah if you have a field yeah. that doesn't allow you to have snacks and food on the field you know i mean i understand it's a little bit harder to get by for the players themselves right yeah and i mean maybe if we weren't so messy it wouldn't be such a big deal yeah. but there's no trash cans out there and right. you know that's it is it is what it is. So, but I mean, overall, the game was good. I just figured, I just kind of wish we could have gotten a little more interactions going on. Um, well, and I do think that a role as far as it, it, you know, goes on when you have a lot more people, um, you know, like playing character roles and dressing up as character roles. Like I said, we saw a lot of people kind of. I I believe saw a lot of people understanding that concept this last one. So you know, hopefully next time we'll have a little bit more character roles, and I think that. It would be easier for people to realize that there were um, like uh, like talking interactions going on that could be more beneficial to actually talk than it would be to just lay them out and search a body. Right. right. You know. So hopefully, hopefully, once we start seeing some more guys with like actual character outfits coming through, that you know, like that'll be a little bit easier. You'll be a little more immersed in that mindset. Um, you know, at the at the same time, I mean, the the player does dictate how the storyline falls in the end, and it is there's some big hostility for the next one. You know, you know, I mean, it just has to be. Right. I mean, the governor got his arm cut off uh, with a <laughs> chainsaw. We got pushed out of the castle uh, back to like no man's land. Um, I'm, we we got. Uh, Double crossed by just about everybody that we paid for missions. Hey, though, we got double crossed by several people as well. Oh, and yeah, and I mean that's just I what mean, I'm it was saying. Like if, every time I turn around, there was some other fucking camo guy up in your castle, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Especially if you got double, you know, <laughs> yeah. like I was like yeah. down to like Dude. seven guys. I felt like because we end. got defectors at the very oh, beginning. Man. But then as the game went on, yeah. we realized that they just played us as well. Oh, okay. So, I mean, there's hostility within the Fallen. Yeah. It sounds like there's going to be hostility within the UAF as well. Yeah. Um, I worked it out with the commander, though, Sling Steel. Yeah. yeah. Or with the co-commander, I yeah. mean. So, I uh, heard. I heard. We're all right. Yeah. Sling Steel tried to turn us against <laughs> each other. But, uh, and I had a close-up shot. But uh, we'll see him like turning, old, turning. Him old against. Ricky, old Ricky boy, co-commander, uh, showed his true stripes towards the end of the game there and came out. And, uh, okay, there you go. So that's a perfect example of yeah. of a situation where you could benefit more from having a talk with somebody than actually just going in guns blazing. Right. Because if that would have worked, if he would have pitted you guys against it each other, 
it would have been terrible and the story would have played out completely different at the end. Oh yeah. I mean, it would have. Yeah, for sure. And he was, you know, was real close. Right. So right. Could have been bad. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I really do think that I think it's cool that, um, and, I'm a, it, and, the, and the crazy part about that was, is like, is like, I'm tr I'm truly usually not a naive person, but he totally, you know, just like, you know, it went right past me on that one. Right, and that's what yeah. he was, you know, he immersed yeah. himself in, he yeah. got the character roll down, it threw you off. Um, I have one where he threw me off, him and Panda were going at it, and uh, uh, it took me a second to realize that they were still in character mode, and they weren't actually pissed at each other, you know, right? Which, I mean, that's cool, you know, that's, yeah. that's uh, obviously played it well if I was questioning myself <laughs> too, so, you know, I mean, that's what it's all about. Yeah, for sure. Which, big shout out to you guys, you know, thank, thanks for coming out, Freddie, thanks for coming out, Panda, Gladiators, for sure. Oh, yeah, I all the Gladiators came it. out. We yeah. um, we knew them all besides, uh, what's it, uh, call sign Beards? Beards, I think yeah. his name was Anthony. Anthony, okay, I think so. I saw him, I saw him comment on one of our Facebook posts not too long ago, just yeah. saying thanks and all that. Uh, shout out to him, too. Uh, that was our first time meeting them. We knew all the other guys from before. Uh, woo -woo. They, they came. Um they wore some camos they wore right? some camos right, right. <laughs> which is against their coat <laughs> but uh, i mean they, they, they took they took on their they took on their own role themselves Yo, did, too did you see their camo though yeah yeah, it was yeah a pro i thought, I thought what, that's a project armor that's a pro or project honor camo. project honor i like that shit yeah, that yeah. shit's dope a lot of, a lot of um i will say though man a lot of uh you hear that brian we're getting a new camo <laughs> I don't know, because dude, a lot of a lot of places don't allow that because it's a total mix of of green and tan. If you look at it, I know that's why they got it. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> that's why they got. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it works for us though. But yeah, I mean, they played their own. I think multicam is the same way though. It's such it's so green and tan, especially with how many different fades you got on it. Yeah, I mean, you got you know one the green's real bright. You know, one the it's green's just, like dull. Between the Project Armory and the. Uh, or Armory, <laughs> Project Armory. We're so we're so fixated on Project Armory. Man, uh, we're, bro, we've been working a lot, of, a lot on that, on, a lot on that project though. The, pro the between the Project Honor camo and the multi cam camo, they do, I mean the only thing different is the shapes. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean they're pretty much the same camo. But back to the Project Armory, uh, that you know since I'm so eager to talk about that apparently, uh, that's definitely mm -hmm. something that's going that's getting in the works. We're trying to get that trying to get the school and make that a permanent field yep. so you know stay tuned into that and uh try to you know spread the word on what we're getting done over here and you know stay tuned into youtubers anonymous for more yeah, information so, I mean, with that because give them a breakdown real quick if if they're not aware um some people probably haven't seen the last podcast we did that's kind of where we announced it at yeah um, so uh basically um at the moment we uh we were leasing the place and are not leasing the place anymore. And if we, you guys, if you guys aren't aware, it's the school we were operating out of in Mil Milroy, Indiana. We had a couple yeah, the, of games there ourselves. It's um, a Seventy-five thousand square foot mm -hmm. indoor high school, three stories, and uh, we basically use the gym as a big staging area. But there's, you know, we have lots of opportunities with it, and we were renting it out. We are not right now. And uh, we're just trying to, you know, save up our funds just to purchase it and make it a permanent field. Um, that's why we're hosting games, and that's why we're uh, making, you know, the apparel for Birds of Prey, you know, the Project Armory t-shirts, selling the patches, um, things like that. You know, tell your friends, spread it out on the forums, and uh, try to, uh, you know, spread the word for that, you know, because it's everything that, everything that we're doing with Enola Gay, with the uh, t-shirts, with the patches, with, you know, hosting games, the open plays, it's all of our, all of our proceeds are going towards, uh, you know, either back into funding these things or going into a savings account to purely buy this school so we can make a permanent field. You know, we got huge plans with the place where we can, you know, uh, unveil, you know, airsoft, an airsoft center like you guys have you know not seen in the midwest that's for sure and if you guys are interested some of the products that we do have uh they're going exclusively towards us purchasing those funds um we got the project armory t-shirts right here all the proceeds from this go directly into the account to get the building purchased for it to be a permanent field got the project armory on the front we got the birds of prey 
on the side and we got project armoring coming down the bottom right here so that's just one example of the things that we got that are, are exclusive to the project armory donation um, we also do have, we just got these, we're pretty proud of these. These are the PVC Birds of Prey Armory Patches. I don't know if you can see those, 3D, PVC, you know, um, funds on those go into the um, Project Armory account as well. We have those same patches without Velcro on keychains too. Sell them a lot cheaper. But, um. So, but back to Blackout, you know, I, I mean, I, I thought it was a great day. I think we need to get a little bit better with uh, ourselves with, you know, just doing a nice, a nice long briefing in the beginning, you know, giving, I, I think we could have given a, a, a more uh, um, hard line rundown um, and, you know, giving credit to the sponsors, you know, in a certain order, I, you know, I messed that up, mm -hmm. probably could have done a better job with that, so I'm, I'm going to, you know, start making notes and just running off of notes and just trying to improve. I never was good with speech though, so right. you know. <clears throat> well, and that's yeah. something that uh. Maybe I'll just make a video and we'll just put a flat screen up on the back of the. Yeah. <laughs> well, like like we like we've said at every game that we've ever hosted, um, you guys, if you have criticism, please please tell us because that really helps us to make it easier for us to tailor make it for the team, um, and all the players out there. That um that does nothing but help us. We're not gonna be pissed or anything like that if somebody comes with some criticism we're going to use it to our advantage to make it better for you another thing too is that any game that that like on our event tab like if it's the next game coming up for instance if if uh the next game coming up for us is april 11th for cowboys and indians we're going to get in there and we're going to make a pin post for the rule sets and what we you know how that game is going to play out and what it's all about you know and for whatever game is coming up will be on that pin post so if you're ever needing to find the rule sets you don't need to go searching through the discussion page to find those yeah. uh to find the, those rules whatever event is is the next one coming will be the the pin post on our on our facebook page will be telling about that mm -hmm. event so you never have to search for that and the, and that's the way it was i heard a lot of complaints that people were not able to find the rule sets or the storyline right. but it i guess that's not too common of a practice to do that but i think it's the easiest way to just be able to find the information all the time right so yeah um definitely be you know looking through our page and, and checking it out when we have an event going on yeah. and uh looking for that pin post yeah. and, and if you don't know what a pin post is it's 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 basically uh, uh you put a it's a facebook pin that holds that post it's always going to be the first post in the in our in our feed or our scroll so yeah so yeah with uh you know when with all that being said um uh shout out to zach from pewtubers for hooking us up with the microphone to be able to get this done yeah thank um, you very much zach appreciate it brother we're gonna be trying to add some new things to the youtube channel uh we're gonna try to add some some honest reviews brutally honest if need be um on some guns apparel equipment things like that um, one of the things that, that happened to me, that's probably happened to a majority of people while playing, um, airsoft, when they first get into airsoft, they see something that they think looks cool. They see all kind of good reviews on it by, you know, big name YouTube oh, guys. Man. So you think the product itself is awesome and you get it and you realize that it's just mediocre. And then the longer you're in airsoft, you realize what happens is, oh, they got sponsors by those people. Therefore, right. it's harder for them to actually downplay a product if it's not good. My opinion is, I'm gonna say that that shit is garbage, if it's garbage, right? Absolutely. You know, I don't understand, especially if, if airsoft itself is, majority of airsoft is honor. Yeah. You have to play with honor for it to be a good experience absolutely and that's the way it is why wouldn't she be using honor and be truthful if something sucks right. you know right because i wish there's things i bought and that i wish i hadn't have bought and due to the fact i saw big name people reviewing it reviewing and saying it was it. tight right so uh yeah we're gonna add some of that to the youtube page um gonna try to do a little bit of voiceover action for some of the gameplay videos especially the milson videos uh especially those ones um 
I think we had something. We had something else we were adding. I mean, we're going. Uh, we'll be sponsoring Centurions, uh, Tracy and Copen, uh, uh, at at the end of March, March twenty yeah, seventh. Yeah, March twenty seventh through 29th um, through Centurion Combat. They Lake are Georgia. Yeah, Lake yeah. Georgia will be going down there and sponsoring that event. I think we're actually going to have our entire team there. I do think that we'll we probably will it, have everybody. I think there. it's the entire yeah. team except for Justin, but he'll be in school. So every everybody right now on our team is scheduled to go, minus uh, a yeah. minor that we have who's just going to have to stay due to school. But um, everybody else from Birds of Prey is going to be there. Yeah. Um, so right now, I think that that would be cool for everybody to yeah come if they if they want to meet some people. Yep. And yeah, then the following cool. month, we'll be uh, we'll be knocking out the Cowboys and Indians game at the beginning of mm -hmm. April just uh which you guys should come out and you know check that out and do a uh you know do a warm up of Sherwood Forest and get your get your asses ready for VFA charity game. Got a um, big year coming up. Yeah. VFA charity game is going to be an awesome game. I can't wait for that. We're actually going to be vending there as well. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be there vending ourselves. Yeah. Um I know that uh uh, you guys should probably read up on that if you're interested. It sounds pretty different comparative to a lot of other games. It sounds so fun, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sounds so fun. I'm I'm super excited for that game. It's gonna be an awesome time. Um, also, if you're going to that game and you want pyro, we are the Enola Gay. We are the you know the pyro dealers for this game. If you want grenades, um. Get a hold of us and pre-register, or not pre-register, pre-order the uh, for those grenades. Um, I've been told that there's going to be a high count, and with the amount of, with the amount of people that are expected to be there, and the uh, amount of grenades expected to be sold, you guys need to pre-order them so we can make sure we have enough. Especially if you guys have a determined idea of what you want before you come. Pre-order it, and we can just bring it wrapped up in a nice little gift box for you. There will be a limited supply at the game. There, With the way people have been talking, we're going to do all we can to get our stocks up. But, I, I mean, mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's kind of... I, even if I bring a couple hundred, even if we bring a couple hundred grenades, I mean, you're, and the, you know, and those, are, you know, that's the only way to instantly kill a bot. Right. Um, I mean, you're still talking about, you know one per person if there's only a couple of hundred people if you know right. if the projected people the amount of players is higher than that then you guys need to pre-order them you know um they're they'll definitely go we'll fast, definitely yeah. we'll definitely still have some but yeah we'll once, have some but once, it's gonna be limited supply yeah once it's out on the field um and we are out of stock at the game that will be it yeah. so if you guys do have an idea on mine pre-order ahead of time um you can always reach us on our facebook page through the messenger uh, get a hold of us. We'll be more than happy to get back with you and get that that resolved. Definitely check out those micro smokes. Check them out. Yeah, the micro smokes are pretty cool too. We got we got a ton of smoke. So well, and micro smokes are good for somebody. You know, um, oh, you know, I just I want to try it out to see what these are all about real quick. Yeah, I like using them for just like flushing people out of small small yeah. structures that are right. it's not like an enclosed building. Yeah. Like just throw it out there, and make them move, things like that. So, They're yeah. super convenient they're super yeah. perfect to carry on you i mean and just you don't have it's to worry about to carry them and you don't have to worry about hurting anybody with them right right, right. Them in their direction yeah. you know yeah so well yeah we tried to wrap this up like four or five times now <laughs> i think it's probably uh not a problem at all but yeah i mean unless um unless we got anything else uh pertinent information yeah i'm good yeah yeah i think you're good i know had a wonderful time wonderful game yeah. Look forward to uh, seeing you all out there, man. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, let's wrap it up. Uh, once again, thanks to all the sponsors that came out. Thanks to the guys who sponsor us consistently past just game to game. They sponsor us as a whole. We really appreciate that. PewTubers, um, Tactical Airsoft Combat Simulations, uh, Deranged Airsoft, VFA, um, any of those guys that are out there. Check them out on Facebook. Give them a like. See what they got going on. They got some awesome stuff going on themselves, as you guys are already aware with some of those companies, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, other than that, this is Osprey signing out. Raptor out. Levant. Out. See, See you ya. guys. All right, go, little well, trusty. <laughs> you go, bro.